Hello, welcome back again to Engineering Semester Channel. Today let's start the another interesting topics of the WebRTC tutorial series. If you are new to this channel or new to this WebRTC series, please go and watch our introduction part first. Today let us see how WebSocket is used in WebRTC communication and why it is required. In the one of the last video we have already discussed the difference between WebRTC and WebSocket. If you did not watch that video yet, I have given the link in the description. Let us get started. First, let us see what is WebRTC and WebSocket in general. WebRTC, Web Real-Time Communication which provides features like multimedia, data streams and peer-to-peer -peer communication. WebRTC is establishing a special real-time communication channels from the browser. WebSocket is a protocol which is based on HTTP and it required a server. You can either send or receive any data via a WebSocket. Now a common question will come, can we use WebSocket instead of WebRTC? Are they similar or different? It is confusing. Is in it? Let us see in detail, what are the uses of WebSocket and WebRTC? Using WebSocket, you can send or receive any data. WebSocket is just a transport protocol and HTTP based. But one important thing you should understand that WebSocket cannot capture any audio and video streams. Coming to WebRTC. WebRTC is mainly designed to share the multimedia streams across the browsers. But some more additional features like data sharing can also do it in WebRTC. This is achieved by using data channels. WebRTC is based on Datagram Transport Layer Security, in short DTLS. So it is very secure. Coming to other important features of WebSocket. WebSocket required a server. It is a server to browser communication which is full duplex. You can use WSS. That is WebSocket protocol over HTTPS to make your WebSocket secure and also building a socket connection. In WebRTC we already discussed that WebRTC required a signaling server to exchange SDP offer and answer. The important thing you need to remember on WebRTC is that it is a full duplex communication between browser to browser. So to conclude what we have discussed. WebSocket is designed for reliable communication and it is mainly focused on web applications. If you want a client-server communication, you can choose WebSockets. In WebRTC, there may be packet loss can happen. It is very secure and mainly used in peer-to-peer -peer communication. Now I hope your confusion has resolved to some extent. Let us see how WebSockets are used in WebRTC next. Before that let us recap what is signaling in WebRTC. We have already discussed in the one of the previous videos. We know that. To initiate a session, WebRTC required a signaling. Signaling server can exchange the necessary information about each user's IP address and other metadata. Session description protocol, SDP which create the session parameters. And finally. We can send SDP offer and answer through signaling server. Now we understood that WebRTC doesn't use WebSocket. It has its own set of protocols. But WebRTC has no signaling of its own. Signaling is necessary in order to open a WebRTC peer connection. So how can we create signaling in WebRTC? So that is why we can use WebSocket in WebRTC. You can use other protocols such as Socket.io, XMPP, SIP over WebSocket, etc. One of the best way is to use WebSocket. Now let us see a simple flow of WebSocket with WebRTC. Here there are two browsers which has been connected with Signaling Server. Signaling Server is written in Node.js application. Node.js is an asynchronous, server-side JavaScript server. To get SDP offer and answer across the browser, we are using WebSocket-based signaling server. Once the session initiated then browser-to-browser -browser communication will happen. 
This is the core part of WebRTC technology. Next let us look. How can we use socket functions? WebSocket server will do the WebSocket signaling without using other protocols such as XMPP or SIP. The first step is always to open a new secure WebSocket connection. We can use WSS for that. These are following functions we can use with WebSocket. Using WebSocket on message event we can send data across the connected browsers. That's it for now. I hope you got a better idea about WebSocket and WebRTC are communicating and also how WebSocket can help WebRTC in signaling process. If you are thinking this is informative, then like and share subscribe. Also support us. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.